Hi, I'm Amy with Table Flipping Housewife. I was very excited to find these matching end tables or side tables on Facebook Marketplace. She had them listed for 50, but when I went to go pick them up, I discovered some problems with the drawers. So she offered me 40 and I took them. And if you would like to see what problems I'm mentioning in the drawers and how I repair them and how I turn these around for beautiful bedside tables, then sit back and enjoy. You'll notice that the guide rail is all chewed up and it's because these drawers have metal rails and that one you can see is a little bent out of shape at that end. I'll have to try to fix that. But both of them are doing that. This one is really bad. It looks like grass is in there. That's not grass. That's just chewed up pieces of this. So I started by bending the bent slide guides back in place. Next, I removed the guide tracks. Look how scraped up it is. I flipped it upside down and repositioned them, scraped side facing down. Now the reason the metal slide guides gouged the wooden tracks is because there was no plastic guides on the back of the drawers, so I added them. Looks brand new. I recently posted a tutorial, which I'll link in the description below, on how to modify plastic guides to fit on the wood guide tracks and how to attach them. So I've started sanding the tops of the side tables. And because there are some significant dings, I have started with 80 grit on my surf prep, but I busted through down to the press board in the very tiny little corner. And I was afraid of that. I've refinished similar tables. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my surf prep sander intermittently with my carbide scraper. I'm trying to avoid the outer edges. I have decided I am going to go ahead and scrape and sand down to raw wood for both of the tops. I don't know if I'm gonna stain it or end up painting it, but I need to, or at least I want to sand through all those dings to begin with. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And I figured out a way to prevent me from busting through to the press board underneath. And I'll show you what I've been doing. This is a paint stirring stick. I've been lining up right there to where the two boards meet so that when I sand, I can't sand beyond where the stick is. And that has prevented me from busting through in this corner. And I'll do that all the way around. And then I scuff sanded the rest of the piece with 150. So this is the corner that I exposed you see a little ghost of the press board. Looks like this edge was also starting, but I think I might be fine. Oop, there's a little bit there, maybe there too. The exposed right, press board will absorb moisture and swell if not properly sealed. So I sprayed shellac, which is an alcohol-based, not water-based protectant to seal in those fibers. When the shellac dried, I used an oil-based primer to cover the areas that were sanded down to bare wood. There's a bit of a texture on some of the surfaces, so I've taken a 400 grit sand pad, I've wrapped it around a sanding block, and I'm going to lightly sand it just to make sure I have a smooth surface for the paint. I was going to paint it a different color, um, but 
after seeing the black primer on it, I kind of fell in like with that. So I'm gonna be spraying it black. Now I have my trusty can of Valspar's cabinet and furniture paint and in my favorite color, caviar. There's two different caviars. This is Sherwin-Williams version of caviar. In some light, it almost has a blue tint to it. It's a very pretty color. So I'm going to stir this up really well, and then I'm going to filter it into my Erlax 5500, thin it with a little water, and then head outside to spray. Yes, I'm getting overspray on top of the newly sanded down to bare wood tops. I resanded them and covered the tops prior to spraying the second coat. Before the second coat, I tested the spray pattern to make sure it was flowing out of my sprayer properly. And then I got busy spraying the piece. Later that afternoon, I also sprayed Minwax's polycrylic and a matte finish to protect the entire piece. Now I liked the exposed wood, but I knew they needed some sort of protectant. Now, if you have an exposed piece of bare wood and you put any kind of top coat on it, it darkens the tone in the wood. It brings out the yellow and orange tones again, which is why a paint wash like this is so popular. I used Fusion's Algonquin paint and I diluted it 50 parts paint, 50 parts water. I used a wide brush to brush it on with the grain and then I used a lint-free rag, and again, you'll see that I'm wiping it off in the same direction of the grain. I turn my rag to a clean, dry spot, and I continue to wipe until I have the desired effect. Now, when I started this one here, I already had one layer of wash on it. This was the second. At that point, I had enough paint on my rag to wipe the sides, and that was ample wash for the sides. Now the knobs or the hardware that I'm going to use are these black cup handles that I got a large bag of at a garage sale. I think they came up to 16 cents a piece. I have to place these cup pulls in the right place so that they cover up the existing holes, right? And then drill two and a half inches apart. Now I have been using that King and Charles hardware jig. I'm not very good at it. So I'll film drilling the first big drawer um, and hopefully it fits. I thought it might help to drill through the jig in order to keep my, um, actually down here, to keep my drill straight up and down. That was part of the problem last time. don't get guys I used a jig I measured twice three times four times why aren't these fitting oh my gosh I think I'm going to have a cow I'm doing this off camera so I'm gonna get real with y'all I'm terrible at drilling new holes for hardware especially especially when there's a hole already there that I need to cover with the hardware. I've done this before and I've messed it up before. Um, 
So I redid and redid and redid and redid that first drawer so many times that I finally just blew. And my husband could hear me two floors up. And he came down and the first thing I had to tell him was, I'm fine, I'm just really angry. Kevin steadied the drill and he helped me drill the holes for these two handles. And, and it looked weird because it didn't look straight up and down. It looked like the drill was leaning to the side. I just need to take a piece of wood outside and just practice drilling holes straight up and down. It sounds ridiculous, but anyway. So with his help, I got the second ones on. All I need to do now is put in the knobs, which won't require drilling, and I'll be fine. But anyway, I just thought I'd get real with you. I had a moment, and Kevin came down <laughs> and calmed me down and helped me the very last thing I need to do now is to seal the tops of the side tables. The wash that I put on there is completely dry. I'm going to lightly sand the top. Whenever you put a wash or anything with moisture in it on top of wood, it raises the grain just a little bit. So I'm just gonna lightly sand to smooth that out. I'll wipe that off with a dust cloth and then I'm going to be putting on Gator Hide. This is a product by Dixie Bell. It is the most water repellent top coat that I'm aware of, in my arsenal at least, using my blue sponge. So I'm going to wait two hours to let that dry, if I need to, I'll lightly sand the top again to uh, remove any texture that might be on the top. And then I'll put on second and third coat on the exact same way, and then I'm done. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Until next time.